Welcome back, and this time, I'm going to do my first list. You knew it was going to happen. Stick with me. You know, we all try not to do it, spend the money that we've got on stuff that we don't really need, but come on guys, some of the stuff you just want, you don't necessarily need, but it's that quality of life. You know it's gonna make you a better painter. You know it's gonna make you win those games, whatever it is. At some point, you just can't live without it. Well, this is my top five non-essential hobby accessories. Before we get into it, do me a solid, leave me a subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit the thumbs down if you want. My personal top five. You may disagree. If you do, let me know down in the comments. Granted, some of this stuff you may think is essential, but it's really not. None of this stuff do you need to get involved and enjoy the hobby to its fullest. This is just stuff that you can add, that, you know, maybe it makes life better, maybe it doesn't. But for me, definitely does. Now we've got that out of the way, let's jump straight into this and hit up number five. Good quality brushes. Sure, you can paint with anything you like, you know what, I recommend that's where you start. But I can't tell you how much of a difference, certainly in my opinion, getting into some good quality brushes really made. Personally, I'm a fan of the Winsor & Newton Series 7, Artis Opus Series S. But you know, there's a whole slew of other brushes out there that you should give a go or even look up. I can't tell you what a difference it makes, it's just having a good quality tip, brushes that don't splur, it makes a whole world of difference to the enjoyment of the hobby. And I found it like made things like glazing and getting those really crisp lines much, much, much simpler. I can't overestimate how much of this has brought to my personal hobby experience and is definitely on my list. Definitely guys, check out some decent brushes. But don't forget the cheap brushes have a place in your collection too. And don't be so good at buying GW brushes. They ain't great. Next up, number four. And makes kind of sense. After talking about number five being good quality brushes, that you want to take care of those brushes. That's right, brush cleaner. This is the brand that I use. I swear by it. Um, once you've invested in some good quality brushes, they only stay good quality if you look after them. So conditioning, cleaning, after every session is absolutely essential to keep those bad boys in tip top condition. And you're gonna wanna do that once you find a brush that you want to stick with, that thing's like, mm, it's just like a, a baby or a, a new partner. You just want to like lavish it in love and attention and give it like the best creamy bath you can. You are gonna, you need to get involved in it. So, yep, master's brush cleaner for me. In the past couple of years of painting, this is the only pot of it I've had. I've very, very recently in the past couple of weeks had to get another pot pox. This is nearly done. And, and what I've done is this has been relegated just to metallic paints. So I've got one for non-metallic, one for metallic paints. Makes sense, you separate those things out anyway. But yeah, not essential. You can clean your brushes in cold water and then rinse them out in warm water. You know, give them some TLC. Some people use toothpaste on them. You can do all of those things. Whatever it is you choose to do, make sure you look after your decent brushes. Makes sense? You know it does. Number three. So, bit of a controversial one, not gonna lie. Had a conversation with a couple of my friends. Some people are definitely for, some people are definitely against, some people don't see the point. For me, I really do. I'm enjoying it, I don't hate it. So what is it? It's my paint agitator. Technically, it's a piece of scientific equipment. Um, it's like an industrial test tube shaker by 4E Scientific. Not cheap, there are cheaper ones. But this, coupled with some agitator balls, has been a game changer for me. Um, 10, 20 seconds of the agitator, with those balls in there, my god, my paints are just perfect whenever I use them. Uh, it, makes, it makes so much difference, because you know, 
shaking them forever. I mean, we all know the importance of making sure your paints are properly mixed to get that right consistency. So anything that kind of improves my quality of life there, I enjoy it. And this was kind of an out there one that I wasn't sure about. It was quite a significant investment in terms of cost, but it came pretty, recommend pretty highly recommended. So yeah, overall I've been using it for about six months now and there is no way I would live without one. Um, yeah, paint agitators. Pretty controversial, but I'm feeling it. Closing in fast now to the top spot, guys. But here we are. Number two. Wet palettes. My days, how people paint without a wet palette is beyond me. You certainly don't need one, and anybody that's seen some of G-Dub's videos, or their painting tutorials, will see that they kind of, they just use the painting pad which is great, and that's absolutely fine. If that's all you've got, if that's all you need, brilliant. For me, I found going from nothing, just from a tile, to a wet palette, to be a huge, huge game changer. I can't, I can't elucidate how much of a difference this made to my painting. So, if you don't know, a wet palette is basically like, it's a palette that is moist. It keeps your paints nice and wet, flowing really well, gives you a much longer working time for those paints. Um, you can even close that paint palette up, go away and come back the next day or even a week later and your paints are ready to go. It's absolutely stunning. And for certain techniques, like wet blending, glazing, things like that, mixing paints, mixing tones together, it, it's a game changer, it really is. And it's one of those things, you can make them yourself, so it's free guys, there's no reason not to try it. Or if you want to, there's a couple of uh, different suppliers that do some really good wet palettes out there. I've tried a couple of them, and at the moment, I've settled on the small Arami paint wet palette. It is really, really good. Absolutely essential for me, and almost pipped the top spot. But yeah, give it a go. Wet palettes, another super happy thing. Just thinking about wet palettes makes me happy. And here we are, number one. For me at least, I thought about this a fair bit and like I say, wet palette was almost there, but it's gonna be my airbrush. I know some people say that this is hobby cheating. I don't understand that. It's like, if you think that you can cheat at painting miniatures, what game are you even playing? It's all about enjoyment. I just don't get that. So yeah. My airbrush, not hobby cheating, hobby efficiency, and oh my days. When I first tried an airbrush, I hated it. I put a lot of time, a lot of effort, and I could not get my head around it. I just, I couldn't use it. I don't know what it was, it just, it didn't work for me. And then, over time, I kind of started to figure out and learn what the airbrush was doing, and that's when I started to learn how to use the airbrush much better. So there was that initial investment in, in the equipment, but then there was that that very steep incline of a learning curve, and it wasn't just a case of learning how to thin paints, it was all of the things around it, like learning how the compressor worked, how having a wet line um, can affect the paint, learning how different paints require different pressures, all of these things combined, and then I upgraded my setup once I started to kind of really learn. And having a tank as well as a compressor, so just, just a small tank so that the compressor's not always running, it made such a huge difference. And then that then encouraged me to learn more and get more out of my airbrush, to the point where I upgraded to some better airbrushes, um, and now I've got a collection of airbrushes. So yeah, but, whether you choose to just use it for base coating, varnishing, undercoating, or starting to paint your entire miniature with it as, as like a starting jumping on point, or you know maybe get to the point where you, you can literally paint an entire miniature with the airbrush. It just offers so much versatility and freedom. For me, it's a tool that I use in conjunction with a brush. I don't think I'm ever gonna be at a point with certainly 
28 30 mil miniatures where I can paint it entirely or would want to paint it entirely in an airbrush I appreciate those people that do but for me that's not what I go for I tend to use it for base coating effects uh, weathering that kind of thing um, I do jump around with it but it was an absolute game changer and in terms of like just getting stuff done fast the monotony, the monotony of getting the base coats down even if that's all I used it for still great and if that is all that you want to use it for no reason to go out and buy a ridiculously expensive airbrush kit but yeah if you do want to give it a go you can do for around 50 pounds um, you can find cheap ones out there on Amazon that do a reasonable job you know what have you got to lose 50 quid yeah, it's a lot of money, but could save you that back in the amount of time that you get to actually enjoy the hobby. So, there we are. No, wait, you've got to have a bonus one, haven't you? You do. So, honourable mention goes to this. The humble painting handle. Now, again, this is a purchase one, but before I discovered these, I was just using an old paint pot, bit of blue tack, mini on top, jobs are good on. <laughs> it was almost hide for number one guys, just this simple thing, a paint pot, a bit of cork, something to hold the mini, rather than the mini itself when you're painting, makes such a difference. Absolutely not needed, you can get by, absolutely fine without it, um, without using any type of paint handle at all. But for me, I can't paint without a paint handle pretty much now. Um, so I've got several of those. I've got some bigger ones, smaller ones. Yeah, painting handles. You wouldn't think that something so simple would make such a huge difference. And there we have it, guys. That was my top five non-essential hobby accessories. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Maybe there's something that you have that I should be using. Let me know, I would love to give it a go. If you didn't agree with me, you probably don't. It's a very individual thing. Again, let me know. It'd be interesting to see whether you agree with me, whether you don't. And with that guys, I think that's everything we've got to say. So, as always, if you enjoyed the video, do leave me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon, if you didn't enjoy it and you didn't get any value from it, leave me a thumbs down. Let me know what I could be doing better. What I want to do is make decent content that gives something back to the community that's given me so much enjoyment over the years. And with that, the only thing I've got left to say is if you're going to do crack, make sure it's plastic. See ya.